So I now move to the risk monitoring and performance uh, measurement. So there are three pillars of effective risk management. Uh, first is uh, planning, then we have budgeting, and then we have monitoring. And that 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 what's uh, that's what make the uh, risk management unit or RMU. So the amount of uh, risk taken ultimately drives the level of return. So risk is the cost of return. So uh, that that's a quite an interesting term here. Yeah. So value at risk is defined as the largest loss for a certain level of confidence over a specified period of time. So largest possible loss this should be a keyword when you talk about value at risk tracking errors is defined as standard deviation of excess return and excess return is alpha and uh, warrant tracking error are both measures of risk and uh, too much risk taken suggests a wall level too high and willingness to accept large losses to produce uh, unnecessary high returns too little risk suggests that there is not enough active management and actual return will fall short of the budgeted returns. And war may be used to suggest the maximum dollar value of losses for a specified level of con a specified con level of confidence over a period of time. So uh, tracking error uh, on the other hand may be used to determine relative amount of discretion that can be taken by portfolio manager. So war could be used for asset classes, capital allocation decisions uh, uh, among the asset depending on risk and return portfolio. But stacking error is something that helps you to decide uh, how liberty or room you are going to give to your portfolio manager because actually he is driving those alphas and bringing those excess return. So risk planning, its objective and participants are divided into five points. So the first point says that set expected returns and expected volatility goals. The second says that define quantitative measures of success or failure. The third says generalize how risk capital will be utilized to meet the entity's objective. So risk capital, just remember this word. I will come back to it. Defining the difference between events that caused ordinary damage versus serious damage. Identify missions, critical resources, inside of science and discuss what should be done in case those are jeopardized. So, uh, those are the topics of uh, uh, risk management objectives. So, example of entity's goal could include like what tracking error that we just talked about. Scenario analysis could also be used uh, to find out the potential uh, failure. Now, defining uh, quantitative measure of success on failure could be something like return on equity, or but uh, risk is just a return on capital. Uh, that was something which was even more interesting that is return on risk capital and understanding how um, uh, this uh, capital will be utilized and uh, overall uh, understanding the likelihood of an occurrence of something uh, which is an ordinary or a, a special damage so we now understand the uh, role of quantitative methods and uh, with the risk budgets and amount of war can be calculated to each item of the income statement this allows ROC to be calculated individually and not in aggregate quantitative methods uh, basically we are the mathematical modeling which are used in risk budgeting they are used to set acceptable level of ROC ROE over a period of time this is to determine if sufficient compensation for risk is taken then we have the applying mean variance optimization then we have simulating a portfolio based on the weights above and several period apply sensitivity analysis and then we have risk monitoring and uh, uh, risk monitoring consciousness within an organization so we have banks who lend funds to investors are concerned about risk board of invest investment clients and senior management plan sponsor uh, are also worried about risk and investors are now also worrying about risk so what's a risk uh, management unit so all, all these things are being taken by taken care by uh, a risk management unit and uh, it helps uh, to uh, uh, monitor the investment management uh, 
portfolio risk exposure and ascertain the exposure authorized and consistent with risk budget previously set. To ensure proper segregation of duties, risk management will be dependent and not report to senior management. So uh, the risk management function should be independent to make sure everything works fine. So two questions are asked here. The first is, the, is the manager generating a forecasted level of striking error that is consistent with the target? Second question is, is risk capital allocated to expected return? So forecasting tracking error is an approximation of potential risk of portfolio using statistical method. For each portfolio, the forecast should be compared to the budget using predetermined guidelines. How much variance for the required investigation? How much change required immediate action? Presumably, budget was formulated taking into account the client expectation. Taking error forecast report should be produced for all accounts. Now, overall uh, tracking risk is not sufficient to measure on its own. It's important to break down the tracks into subsections. If the analysis of risk taken per sec does not suggest that risk is being ongoing or going then uh, there may be a style drift. A style drift may manifest itself in the value uh, portfolio manager who attains overall tracking error targets but allocates most of the risk in growth investment. So, if somebody is investing everything into growth and not in value, then there is a kind of style drift that he is taking. Therefore, by engaging in risk decomposition, RMU may ensure the portfolio investments are considered with the predetermined expectation which are the stated policies. So now we move to the liquidity consideration and understand the importance of liquidity consideration for a portfolio. So one potential measure of liquidity uh, consideration is the liquidity duration which is an approximate uh, number of days necessary to dispose of portfolio funding without significant market impact. So there is a formula which is known as liquidity duration is equal to Q divided by 0.1 into V or number of uh, shares of the security divided by 0.1 into daily volumes. So the idea is that uh, we don't drive the index um, on our own. Then we have four points here which in the performance measurement. First is the comparison of uh, performance with expectation. The second is return attribution. Then we have the sharp information ratio comparison with benchmark and peer group. So these are the four uh, performance measure. Now we look to the first comparison of performance with expectation. So for for a risk perspective, portfolio manager should be assessed on the basis of able to produce portfolio with is uh, that is paid to approximately the target. In addition, they should also be assessed on their ability to actually achieve risk level that are closer to target. From a return perspective, portfolio manager could be assessed on the ability to earn excess return, Goldman Sachs asset management, so-called uh, green zone, to identify instances of actual tracking and performance that are outside normal expectation, and XM of deviation is determined and division amount is a zone event. Unusual events that are expected to occur with regulatory are considered yellow events. So, uh, this is how they do that. They create all those uh, points to measure the performance. Then we have the return attribution. And uh, it's important to ensure that returns uh, result from decisions where manager intended to take risk and not simply from sheer luck. So variance is used to illustrate contribution to overall portfolio performance. The securities can be regrouped in various ways to conduct cases by industry sector people, for example. In return attribution factor, risk analysis and factor contribution should be used. Then we have the sharp and information ratio. And we talked about a lot of them. So, uh, no. The strength of these metrics include easy to use, uh, easy to determine if manager generates sufficient excess return, easy to apply industry sector, weakness is there insufficient data available to perform calculation, the use of relative risk may result in overstating performance calculation. And the last is comparing with benchmark portfolio and peer groups. So one could use linear, linear regression analysis to regress the excess return of investment against the excess return of the benchmark. Uh, one of the output from the regression is alpha, it could be tested for uh, statistical significance, the other is beta and it relates to amount of leverage on the underlying overweighting in the market compared to the benchmark. The regression also allows a comparison of uh, absolute amount of uh, return compared to the benchmark and one could also regress the excess return of the manager against the excess of the manager's peer group. So uh, the feature of regression are generally similar to that of benchmark above except the returns of peer group sufficiently different from survival bias. So that was all uh, for the uh, reading here about monitoring and performance measurement. I hope it was useful. Thank you for listening.